Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Penny. I am a master esthetician in Portland, Oregon, and I'm also a hairstylist for 16 years now. So in today's video, this is the Friday Q&A. This is the video that I am doing every single week where I try to take your comments or your questions and answer them in a video format. So this week's gonna be a tiny bit different because I'm gonna be answering one single question that I get so much that I thought I'm gonna take a whole video and answer this question and that is about microneedling for hair regrowth so I wanted to give you some science behind hair and skin and then why you might want to microneedle and then what I'm gonna do in the next two weeks is I'm going to video a protocol of needling the scalp that you may be able to follow along with. But I think that you should have the information first to determine whether or not you're even a candidate for microneedling for hair loss. Okay, so let's get right into it. First of all, What's important to know is that there are different causes of hair loss and some of them are treatable and some of them are not treatable. There so are two types that are treatable and that is alopecia areata and that is where there are areas of hair loss that are usually small round patches or they can be large round patches that you will lose your hair and you will bald. Just, it can be anywhere on your head, just randomly. They will either spontaneously grow back or they may become permanent. Now that is a type of hair loss that is treatable. Now, another type of hair loss that is treatable is androgenic alopecia. Now this is the kind of alopecia that is genetic. It's hereditary. So you are or you are not genetically predisposed to lose your hair as a man or as a woman. Now this type of balding or hair loss is also treatable. So that is very encouraging because that does make up a large section of people who are interested in treating themselves for hair loss. Now, what are some other causes of hair loss? We have obviously, again, genetics. There are um, people with iron deficiencies. There are infections. There's bacterial infections and fungal infections. There are parasites that cause hair loss, hypothyroidism. There is trauma. And when they talk about trauma, what we're talking about is if you wore your hair in a very severe ponytail every day for 10 years, you definitely can experience some hair loss at those points that were pulled too tightly into that ponytail. Some of you probably have experienced this before. Also, people who get cornrows repeatedly, they can experience uh, hair loss at those points of trauma, at the ends of those cornrows, where that follicle gets repeatedly traumatized. You can definitely experience some hair loss there as well. I want to look a little bit at hair anatomy. So I'm gonna put this slide up, and I just think it's important for you guys to see that you have you know, the skin, you have your epidermis, that's in the top there, in that middle pink section where you see the hair root, the sebaceous gland, the hair bulb and the follicle, you see blood vessels, uh, the sweat glands, all of those things, um, collagen fibers are in there. All of those things are in the dermis. And that is important because if you've been here for a little while, you know that when we are trying to induce collagen in our skin, we're trying to get the needles into our upper reticular dermis. So we have our epidermis. Right below that, we have something called the dermis. The dermis is split into two layers. The top part just underneath the epidermis is the papillary dermis. And just below the papillary dermis is something called the reticular dermis. That's the two parts of the dermis that make up what is called the dermis. Now in the reticular dermis, that's where we want to get our needles in order to stimulate collagen. It's important to know that there are all these causes of hair loss, but another thing that causes hair loss as we age is our loss of collagen. And the reason why that's super important is because, you know, by the time we are turning 30, slowly but surely every single year of our life, we are producing less and less collagen. Just like for anti-aging, we need that collagen in our dermis, on our scalp, to help support the hair follicle. So that to me is where microneedling really can shine and help with hair loss in the stimulation of collagen in the dermis 
on the scalp. So people ask about different needle depths and it's true, you definitely do have to go in deeper on the scalp in order to get your needles into the reticular dermis to stimulate those fibroblasts to produce that collagen that is going to then help to support the structure of the follicle and keep it healthy and not have it weaken and shrink. Okay, the other thing that microneedling is going to do is it's gonna help with blood flow. And blood flow is what can bring nutrients to the area. And you know, a nutrient rich dermis is going to produce healthier follicles and healthier hair. Okay, next I wanna look at the hair growth cycle. So it's important to note that there are phases of hair growth. First of all, you have the antigen phase. This is the active phase, you guys and typically it can grow actively for two to six years. The next phase is called the catagen phase. Now in this phase, your hair follicle starts to shrink, it breaks away and it rests before it finally falls out. So there is a point when your follicle is no longer growing, but it's still on your head. It hasn't fallen out yet, it's just resting and prepping to go into what is called the telogen phase. Now the telogen phase is the inactive hair falls out and it, that takes a few weeks when this phase happens and then you lose that hair and that hair follicle starts over. And it's just this cycle that we go through in our in, for our entire life. Okay, and a side note, something that's kind of interesting is when you guys talk about Latisse for your eyelashes, it's the same thing, you guys your eyelashes have an antigen, catagen, and a telogen phase as well. And they of course grow to a certain length and then they, you know, they stop growing, they rest, and then they fall out and new ones start to grow in. And all Latisse does or some of these lash growth serums is they kind of perpetuate the antigen phase. They let your hair stay in and growing longer. That's why those things like Latisse actually work. They are just helping your hair stay in its growth phase longer. So just that's just kind of a little, um, you know, like Jeopardy fact in case anybody wanted to know. Here's the deal. You guys can microneedle at more shallow depths in order to do product penetration, kind of a la cosmetic needling for your scalp. So the protocol that I'm gonna recommend for you guys, and I'll just tell you now, but I will demonstrate it in my next video, is I recommend cosmetically needling once or twice a week on your scalp and using a hair growth product. That means for women, 2% minoxidil. For men, you can use 5% minoxidil. Although I have to tell you that studies have shown not much of a difference between two and 5% minoxidil. Super important to know that if you're breastfeeding or if you're pregnant, you absolutely should stay away from minoxidil. It is 100% contraindicated. Okay, so once a week you're just doing a cosmetic needle and when it comes to your scalp, this is different. A 0.5 millimeter would be cosmetic needling on your scalp. Our scalp is thicker and it takes a little bit more to get into that dermis. So at 0.5, you're not getting to the dermis and that is a cosmetic needling on your scalp only. Now, once a month, you can go in at one millimeter and use exactly the same, minoxidil two or 5% for hair growth. Oh, now, remember, it is really important that if you are experiencing active hair loss and you don't know why, that you really should see a doctor first to make sure that you understand the underlying cause. You need to be able to address that properly and microneedling is not gonna fix it and it's just super, super important that you understand the cause of your hair loss so that you actually know how you can treat it. Okay, so next week, it might be about 10 days from now, I will definitely be putting out a protocol so that you guys can actually see microneedling the scalp. There are some tips and tricks. It's about 10 minutes per session. Um, you don't need to do it more than that. It's difficult to see a clinical endpoint, so I actually think in this case, a time frame is good. So set a timer for 10 minutes and needle for that 10 minutes. Remember that only one time a month, are you gonna go deeper at one millimeter? Cause that's inducing collagen. We have that collagen cycle. You have that collagenase that peaks at two weeks. So you just don't wanna interrupt that cycle. Hopefully this is helpful. Let me know if you guys have any specific questions that I can address in the needling protocol. I will be happy to do that. I'm gonna try and coerce Dr. Abraham to help me with that video because it is something that she does regularly with her patients. 
so she will be a valuable resource for all of us. I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. I hope you enjoyed this version of the Friday Q&A. It was a little bit different to take just one question, but I think it was one of those questions that was asked so much that I just had to address it in one video. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your Friday and I will talk to you again very, very soon. Take care.